Good evening all, and welcome. Basements certainly give off that creepy vibe. Perhaps you just use yours as storage, if you even have one at all. But one thing is for certain, creepy and sinister encounters are bound to happen there. Remember to like and subscribe for nightly horror stories. But with that out the way, it's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. I don't live in the greatest area, nor in the nicest apartment, so I'm always kind of checking my surroundings when I'm out and about. Nothing crazy, but just being aware of what's going on around me. This being said, the other night I decided that the mountain of dirty clothes inhabiting my closet was bordering on disgusting, and it was time to do one of my least favourite chores, laundry. I don't mind doing laundry itself, but the laundry room in this building always gives me the creeps. It's in the dank and dark basement of the building and you always have to grope the wall for the light switch. It would really make an excellent location for a horror film, to be honest. So I go down, throw my laundry in the machine, and everything is fine and dandy. I come back 40 minutes later to throw it in the dryer. Nothing out of the usual, yet. An hour later, I go back down into the basement to collect my stuff out the dryer. Well, when I turn on the light, the dryer door is open, and my shit is all strewn about. On the ground, hanging out of the dryer, and to top it all off, they're still wet. Which was the worst part, because I didn't want to have to keep coming down to the laundry room because I'm a lazy shit. Normally I'd be like, whatever, because sometimes people open dryers and just don't close them but this really looked like someone rummaged through my stuff. Shrugging this off, I put my stuff back in, and that's when I get a sharp chill running down my back. It was so random. I genuinely felt like I wasn't alone. So I turn around back to the elevator, and all of a sudden I hear the sound of someone frantically running up the stairs on the other side of the room almost as if they had been spotted. I get all my laundry back to my apartment, and notice I'm missing some stuff. But at this point I'm kind of creeped out, so I'm not in the mood to go down snooping around for some t-shirts. So I kind of just forgot about it, until a couple of days later. I received an email from our landlord telling all the residents that a homeless guy not only broke into the building, he performed sexual acts on himself in the laundry room, and then started a fire, and went around the building trying to break into people's unlocked apartments. So I'm guessing this guy went through my stuff, probably took something, did god knows what with it, and then started an actual fire. It was my first time staying home alone, while my whole family was out at my brother's ball game. I was 13. Anyway, I'm on the phone with a friend of mine feeling so grown up, when someone beeps in on the other line. I tell her I'll be right back, and click over lines. Then the creepiest voice I've ever heard says, Hello little girl, I'm the man in your basement. Honestly, I laughed it off and just hung up, thinking it was a prank call. I was a pretty confident little thing, and my neighbourhood was pretty safe, so I figured someone was just messing with me, knowing it was my first time alone. They beeped in again, so I clicked over and heard, Don't you hang up on me, you little- and the lights started flickering, and there was banging under my feet. I know it sounds crazy, but my dog started freaking out, and my cat ran away. So I assume I wasn't imagining anything. Our basement was actually just an area connected to the garage, 
it wasn't finished. I heard what sounded like footsteps coming up the garage steps to get into our kitchen, and I threw stuff in front of the door and heard yelling and whatnot. I kept trying to hang up and call the cops, but every time I tried to, he was still on the phone. My friend told her parents what was happening, and they ran to the neighbor's house to call the police for me. I sat petrified with a broken rifle, a butcher's knife and a baseball bat behind my front door. Because it's the only place in the house downstairs that can't be seen from a window. Crying. Eventually, I clicked over the phone to hear a police dispatcher on the phone, and stayed on the line with her until the police arrived. There was no sign of forced entry, though we had a broken window pane on our outside garage door that had been messed up for months prior, and my guess is that he used that to get in. The police assumed I was just a paranoid girl, and they were going to leave me home alone after they gave me the all clear. Fortunately, a family friend had been driving by and saw the cops, and they all stopped to see if everything was okay. He gave me a ride to the school where my family was. They were skeptical that anything had happened, but we did get a security system not too long after that, and my parents both got cell phones too, as this was 94. After that happened, I swear there was someone stalking me for years. I would leave my apartment locked and bolted, and come back to find appliances, like my hairdryer or stove, maybe heat on, in the middle of summer. I lived in four different places, and would get strange phone calls at every one, despite being unlisted. Cars would randomly be parked down the road from the house, and speed up and slam on the brakes, and I would run inside. I'd hear bangs outside where I lived, even when I was out in the country. Nothing has happened since I've been in my current home, and I'm married, but I am paranoid all this time. I had a great grandmother who had a house similar to ours. She was the sweetest thing ever, and even at the age of 108, beat me at rummy. She had an estate situated on a small drop next to a wooded ravine. The house was very old fashioned, with three wraparound balconies for each floor of the house, all connected with metal staircases. Honestly, probably the worst estate for an elderly woman to live in. We used to have Christmas at her house, and all the kids would go down to the basement to play pool or pachinko. As the years went on, Eventually, it was just me and my siblings in the basement each get together. I was the youngest, so I was the slowest. Whenever it was time to go upstairs, my siblings would race up the stairs and turn the lights off. Each time they did this, I felt a horrible sinister presence rush towards me in my mad dash up the stairs in the dark. When she passed away, my cutthroat family descended on the estate like vultures. I was about 20 and despised the whole thing, but I went with my grandpa to see the damage of everyone's greed with him. It was really sad to walk around the house with him, seeing everything his kids and her husband's kid had taken. My great grandfather was in fact my grandfather's step grandfather. He was genuinely disappointed and hurt. I couldn't help but feel for him and share in his disappointment. When I saw the table that me and my great grandmother played rummy at had been taken only a few months ago. Then we went down to the basement. The familiar surge of unpleasant energy was present, but not overwhelming. We looked around my great grandfather's office and saw it was stripped clean, except for some filing cabinets. The only other thing was now the broken pachinko machine. Then we entered my great grandfather's workshop, which I had no idea existed in the basement. Unlike the rest of the basement, this area didn't have giant windows and was only poorly lit by some track lights. Shelves of tools were everywhere, 
It was like a small warehouse. The feeling of dread washed over me, and I fought the urge to get out of there. Rusty circular saw blades mounted on the walls. Generally, a very poor place for kids to hang out right next to. I never spoke of the basement with anyone, but it just didn't feel right. It felt like something was down there, suppressed, but angry, and violated. Maybe that's the reason my great grandma was always super religious. She was the one who sent us to a Christian summer camp after all. In high school, I had the basement bedroom all to myself. We lived in a two-story home that was no more than 40 years old. But it always felt older to me, because my grandparents had lived there before my family moved in. The first year in the house was my first year of high school, and I loved having a room all to myself. I had been sharing a room with one or more siblings my whole life up until now. There were four doors in my room, one that led to a bathroom, one that led to one of the main rooms of the basement, one for a small walk-in closet, and one that led to a small, unfinished storage room, with a drain in the middle of it. The sprinkler system controls were located in the small storage room, which I always thought was a weird place for them, given that it was the furthest point in the whole house from being near the outside. I should also mention that our basement had those small windows that are located near the ceiling, and are just big enough for a person to crawl through if need be. Although, other than letting a bit of light in, they were useless, as they had been painted when the house was built, and were basically sealed shut from the paint. On the outside, the windows were two to three feet below ground level, in wells that were covered in plastic domes. That first year of high school was quite an experience for me. I was homeschooled through seventh grade, and then moved after my eighth grade year. So I was in a new place, and social anxiety had always been a bit of a problem for me, and still is. But at that point in my life, I chalked it up to all the fear and weirdness I felt, to just being a weird kid. I also suffered from depression all throughout high school, and to make an attempt at battling that, I tried to keep myself involved in as many things as possible. I did everything from sports, to clubs, to plays slash musicals, and at the peak of certain seasons, I would have days where I would leave for wrestling practice at 4.30am, and not get home until 10.30pm or later, after musical practice got out. Needless to say, I was exhausted a lot of the time, or at least tired enough that I should have slept like a baby. That's why it was weird when I started waking up in the middle of the night, on a regular basis. It started out as just being an occasional thing, and sometimes it was obvious reasons, like having a bad dream, or if someone used the main floor bathroom, which was really loud with the pipes being just above my head. Then, about a month before the end of the school year, there was a night where I awoke, terrified for no reason, and it took me a while to calm myself down before I eventually got back to sleep. When I woke up next morning, I tried to recount the experience, and I figured that it must have just been a bad dream that I couldn't remember. The rest of the week was perfectly fine, but that weekend, I experienced the same thing. Waking up panicked, breathing heavy, and sweating, and this time I knew for sure that I had not been dreaming. I looked at my alarm clock, 3.23am. Again, it took some time to calm down and get back to sleep. For quite some time, I just laid there staring at the wall, wondering what had happened to me. Another week went by, and I continued to wake up every few nights, sometimes 
with the same overwhelming feeling of dread, sometimes slowly, almost so slow that I started to question whether I had been asleep in the first place. The weirdest, and what was starting to become the most concerning part of it for me, as I have a religious background, was that I would look at my clock every time I woke up frightened, and literally every single time, it would be 3.23am. School ended, and I continued having these episodes, to the point where I would wake up a few nights a week, and being the weird kid that I was, I didn't think to tell my parents. It became a normal thing for me, so I learned to deal with it when it happened. It didn't seem so bad, until I had a face to put with the fear. At this point, it was early into my second year of high school. The fact that I was waking up so much at night time wasn't seemingly having much effect on me at school. My grades were fine, and I still had plenty of energy to keep up with all the activities I was involved in. One way I found more consistent sleep was staying at friends' houses. I had a good amount of close friends, and I would spend a lot of nights at their houses, because I found I wouldn't wake up randomly at night when I wasn't in my own room. There was one night in December of that year, that I was planning on staying at my best friend's house. We had been hanging out at my house for the afternoon, but we were planning on heading over to his place later, to do our typical stay up late, play video games, and drink way too much Mountain Dew, as it was finally the weekend. What I didn't plan on was my dad getting super pissed off about some stupid thing, and taking his anger out on me, in the form of driving my best friend home, and not letting us hang out anymore that night. I went with my dad, and my best friend, sitting in the back of the car sulking, and building up my own anger at my dad at the unfairness of the situation. We were on the highway, about a halfway to my friend's house, when I had this incredible urge to just open the door and jump out of the car. This really freaked me out, because I had never had that urge to do something like that before, even with my depression. Startled, I looked to the front of the car, and away from the window, and immediately regretted it. Besides my dad and my friend, sitting in the front of the SUV, I was the only other person in the car. But when I looked up, I saw myself in the rearview mirror, and behind me there was another face, clouded in shadow, just inches from mine. I whipped around and almost yelled out, but there was nothing there. I didn't want to say anything to my dad given the current situation. I spent the rest of the drive constantly looking over my shoulder, expecting to see whatever the hell that was again. When we got back to our house, I pretty much just went straight to bed, just wanting the day to be over, but it was far from it. 3.23am. There it was again. The time I had become too used to seeing. I tried to breathe, deeply. I tried to tell myself it's just some weird thing happening with your body, and you'll grow out of it. I turned over, and began the process of falling back to sleep. But that's when I noticed how quiet it was. Too quiet for my house. Eerily quiet. Especially with the lack of outside noise. Because of the time of year, and the snow on the ground. I lay there on my side, staring at the wall with my back to the rest of the room, straining to hear anything in the silence. The only sound I could make out was the soft thump of my own heartbeat, which for some reason was getting faster and heavier. The dread was returning, the sick twist in my gut that I had become accustomed to this time of night but had always been able to fight off before. I continued trying to control my breathing, and tell myself that my growing fear was irrational, but the feeling was increasing, 
welling up in my chest and taking over any other feelings of comfort that I managed to establish. That's when I heard another noise. The sound of my pulse dropped out as I strained again to catch what else I was sensing. Unmistakable horror reached my ears and my chest at the same time. Footsteps, slow and soft on my carpeted floor and approaching my bed. I have never understood the phrase frozen in fear until that moment. I wanted so badly to turn and face whatever this thing was that had been torturing me, but my body would not move. I continued to listen to the footsteps getting closer and closer, and I did the only thing I could, squeezing my eyes shut and muttering a prayer, convinced that the supernatural help was the only thing that could save me at this point. I stopped the prayer, realizing suddenly that all was silent again. The footsteps were gone, and I felt control of my body returning. I still lay on my side, listening for any sound of the sinister presence that I still felt nearby. After a few long moments, I finally rolled over to see an empty room, illuminated only by the light of the small window across from my bed. There was still something wrong though, there was a strange shadow in the light. I looked up to the window, and the horror returned. Just outside the window was the face from earlier that night, sitting there staring down at me. Even though the lights from behind it should have made it impossible to see, I could make out the eyes, dark and empty, and the most skin-crawling smile I have ever seen. Again, I was frozen with fear. I managed to pull my covers up, till all that was showing were my eyes, and the face and I stared at each other. I don't remember what thoughts were going through my head at that point, just the feeling of absolute terror of what I was seeing. At some point in this staring contest from hell, I blinked, and it was gone. I stayed up staring at the window the rest of the night, until I finally passed out from exhaustion. Upon waking up the next morning, I went and checked the window. There were no tracks, or snow, or anything. It appeared as though the plastic dome had been removed. The events of that night did finally give me the push to talk to my parents about it, and they assured me I was probably having nightmares, and getting in my own head about it all, and if anyone was trying to break in, the security system or the dog would make sure that we all knew it was happening. I still don't know what it was, but I'm convinced it wasn't just something in my head. Since high school, I still wake up at night inexplicably, although these days I don't even bother to check the time anymore. But I feel like I know what time it would be if I did. 3.23am My family moved into a house about two years ago, and we found out one of the previous owners died in the dining room. No big deal. I sit at the table to eat. No one else in my family does. We know her name. L is what I'll use. Occasionally, we'd make jokes like L moved something. My mom watches paranormal things and believe Elle has attached herself to me, because I'm the only one who sits in the dining room. One day over a year ago, I had burning on my stomach after eating there, and lifted up my t-shirt to find three scratch marks. I wasn't concerned because I'm not afraid of Elle, but my mum was freaked out. Fast forward to last week, I was in the basement to do laundry, and heard a guy whistle a tune for 30 seconds straight. I froze, and felt like someone was behind me. I didn't look, did laundry, and ran upstairs. I waited for my brother to check the basement. There was nothing, and I told my mum. The very next day I went back down to the basement, and when I come up, my mum says it wasn't funny, as she thought I was whistling, 
and that she had heard it through the vent. When she heard it, I wasn't in the basement, and it wasn't me. She said ten seconds of a tune, and we checked the basement, but there was nothing. There's an owl statue down there that my dad got, but we don't know where from. It's very creepy, and was the only thing behind me that first night. My mum said we're getting rid of it. We carried it outside but accidentally dropped it, shattering it to pieces outside the house. She thinks she set the ghost free, and it went into her. Again, she watches a lot of paranormal shows. I said maybe she let it free. We haven't had any problems since, but we also haven't gone into the basement. She wants to burn sage, but I'm unsure. I also don't understand why this stuff happens out of the blue, and your thoughts would be appreciated. Back in high school, I went homeless for a time, and had to crash on my friend Kate's couch in the basement. It wasn't the most comfortable situation, but it was better than sleeping in my car, or so I thought. I awoke in the dead of night, and I had to pee. So I flung myself up from the bed, and saw a ten foot tall skinny shadow just looming over me. Keep in mind it was pitch black in this room, yet this thing was so dark, I could still make its form out. I felt this intense rot and dread, and I felt like it was looking right at me. I blinked, and then it disappeared. I called my other friend Andrew, and asked to go stay over there, and noped the hell out. A few months later, I was back to living with my parents, and Kate invites me over to go sleep over and chill out. But I ask if it's okay to bring another friend, Ethan. So Ethan drags his dog along, and we all go into the basement where I saw this thing. Immediately, the dog starts going apeshit the moment he gets down there. He just begins running around and barking. Ethan was really confused as why his dog was acting like this, and goes, I'm sorry guys, I don't know what got into him, but me and Kate knew. We knew exactly what was going on. So we told Ethan what was up, and that what I saw wasn't some fluke. So Ethan gets the idea that we should look for an object or something down there, that maybe this entity could be tied to. After about two hours, we come up with nothing. We start to think maybe it's the house. Then Ethan spots something. A bunch of thumbtacks in the wall in a really weird pattern. So then Kate pipes in. Hold up, maybe it's trying to tell us something. It's now 3am in the morning, and we're searching for dialects the thumbtacks could be. Eventually we find it was Morse code. So I ended up translating the Morse code, and it spat out coordinates. The location was only 40 minutes away, it was this volleyball field. After we found out what the thumbtacks were, his dog finally calmed down, and the dread that filled us lifted. We never found out what was there, but man, there was something seriously wrong in that basement, and we never went to check what was in the volleyball court. I experienced the three knocks on my bedroom door in the middle of the night, while hanging out with a friend of my brother. We lived in bedrooms in a half-finished basement, mostly concrete. It was 2am, and we were just hanging out staying up late when we heard a knock on the door. One, two, three. I said come in, but nothing, so I forgot and continued to socialise. When the knocking happened again, one, two, three. This time we were like, who the hell is it? Got up, opened the door, to nothing. That's when we got freaked out. My mum was sleeping upstairs and could hear her snoring to high heaven. No one else was in the house except for us, and all the doors were locked. So we kind of start freaking out. We shut the door, and just sit there 
The knocking comes again. One, two, three. But then this time it's accompanied with a doorknob turn. One, two, three. My brother is a bit braver than me, so he approaches the door and peeks below. This is an unfinished basement, a crappy one at that, and the door has a clearance on the bottom of about three inches. So he peeks and he makes out a shadow. It's dark beyond my bedroom in the basement. The shadow seems to sit there, but not coming off or anything. And then he looks at the knocking and turning of the doorknob, and it starts again over and over until we start screaming, yelling for our mother, my friend yelling her name, and the knocking and turning didn't subdue until she descended the stairs and opened the door. She yelled at us and told us to shut up. It never did happen again, and we never found out what it was. My ex-stepdad came to visit a few weeks later from Washington State and said he had a tall bearded man sometimes in his peripherals down in the basement. I looked up the three knocks, and it's called the death knock. No one's died of yet, and this was 14 years ago. When I lived at home, my stepbrother and I stayed in the basement. It was made into more of an apartment by my stepdad. Bathroom, living room, kitchen, bedroom, and office. Oftentimes at night, I would see a girl looking to be between the ages of seven or eight, running around near the bathroom. She was wearing a red dress and a red headband with long brown hair. I told no one about this, but then at a party I heard my stepbrother relaying that a little girl was running around the basement. He described her in the exact same way I did. I told my mum, and she thought we were crazy. I also started seeing a tall man in the basement. He liked to sit in a particular recliner. Around this time, I started to get questioned if I was sneaking my stepdad beer, and I was not. I did not want cause night, or even like it at the time. Fast forward a few years, and this keeps going on. I have moved out and went to college. Other siblings were blamed for sneaking beer. My mum and her friends liked to get together and do off the wall things. They decided one time to pay for the angel ladies to come over to someone's house. The first person cancelled, the second person cancelled. So it fell onto my mum as the host. This is where it gets fun. They came into the house and said it was an instant hotspot. They said a very tall man in a navy uniform was standing there with a little girl in front of him. He had his hands on her shoulder. My grandmother was also alive at the time and was just there for the fun and wasn't going to get read. The angel ladies wanted to read her, so basically they did it for free. So they do the readings in the basement. When it's my grandmother's turn, my mum joined her. They said that the man and little girl are there. After some time, it is determined that the little girl, who they are calling her angel baby at this point, is my aunt who died at the age of three or four of leukemia. So up until now, things have been overly personal, other than the matching the descriptions of the thing I saw. They said that the angel baby said, I saw the angel's mummy, and my grandmother went white. She said the last thing she said to her was, Do you see the angels, sweetie? And my aunt said, No, mummy, there are no angels. And then she died in my grandmother's arms. She also started playing with her hair and pointing to the closet. They said she wants them to know something about her hair. My grandmother revealed that we had a lock of her hair in the closet that she was pointing to. The angel baby was also asking for her dolly, which my mother revealed was upstairs on a church pew in the family room. We had a family room and a living room. No one ever went into the family room. It was forbidden except for Christmas. The angel baby then left, and the focus switched to the tall man in the navy uniform. 
And this is where it gets less interesting, as I forget the details. I've not heard many dealings with my uncle in the basement. Right off the bat, this was identified as my uncle, who died when he flipped his Jeep. He wasn't wearing his seatbelt, and his head came out of the window and went between the vehicle and the pavement. Anyway, he eventually reveals that he likes to sit in the recliner and drink beer. This was told without any prodding about strange goings on or anything else. He also pointed at my mother and made the motion with his hand like you owe me. They said something traumatic happened to her daughter and that he was there and saw her through it. As a few years earlier, my sister flipped her car, really good flip too, onto the front bumper. To this, my mum exclaimed, I don't owe him shit. He's drinking my beer and living here for free. Beyond this, I can't remember what else came out with my uncle. Now for the only scary thing that happened. On the way out through the front door, you have to walk past the family room. As my mum was saying goodbye, she glanced over and noticed that the church pew was in disarray and the doll was slumped over. Surely someone could have messed with it, but they assured her that they were not in there. Plus, I believed they were the last readings, and no one else was involved or listening. The fact that my uncle was with my sister when she wrecked her car makes sense in a way. He was a godfather when he was alive. My sister was three or four when he died, and my mum said that he is now her guardian angel. She took that as a fairy godfather and thought it was great. During my high school years, my friends and I had a thing for ghost hunting. We would always drive out into the country and explore old abandoned houses, just trying to scare ourselves. At the time, my mother worked for the Girl Scouts at the main office, and it was located in one of the oldest buildings in town, which was rumoured to be an old children's home. My mum told me, that many employees believed the building was haunted by a little girl. One of the employees had to go to the office late into the evening to finish some work and took a four-year-old with her. She was sitting at her desk, which was located next to the main staircase, when she noticed her daughter standing at the bottom of the stairs. She asked her what she was doing, and she replied, Can I play with her, mummy? The alarm had to be disabled by her mother when they arrived, so they know for sure that no one else was in the building at the time. This story gives me chills, as there's no reason for a toddler to lie about something like that. I remembered this story and asked my mum if she would let us in the office at midnight one night. We took our camera and started roaming the office. It's a very large, old three-story building with many offices. Each footstep could easily be heard with loud creaks. After exploring the upper floors trying to spook ourselves, we decided to enter the basement. The entrance to the basement reminded me of a scene straight out of a scary movie, with graffiti and random sketches on the walls. It was a very small basement, with wooden joists supporting the floor above us. We found some old books covered in dust and started to read them. I had the camera in my hand, which provided the only light in the basement. After reading about three sentences, we heard footsteps directly above us, as if someone was walking down the first floor hallway. I whipped the camera up, and you could actually see the floorboards moving, as if someone was stepping on them while walking and dust falling down. I instantly got the hell out of there, and pissed off my friend when I forgot I had the only light. We actually had it on film, and watched it over and over again that night. It was the freakiest thing that's ever happened to me. It was over 10 years ago, and I wish I knew where the film was. I was a utility locator. I used to work on a team with my dad. To find a gas service from the gas main to the house, you must connect the equipment at a gas meter. Many older homes have the gas meter in the basement. Sometimes, 
I would be the one that would connect the equipment, while my dad found the gas service. In this particular day, we get to a house that had the meter in the basement. I go up, knock on the door, and the homeowner points me in the direction of the stairs to the basement. I go down, and I see the gas meter in the corner, with two walls built around it, making it like a closet with no door. Behind the gas meter is the old crawl space halfway up the cinder block wall. There are no lights in the crawl space. I step into the closet area, and I hear what I can only describe as a demonic growl come from the crawl space. I step out, call my dad, and I don't want to sound spooked. I just say I need a flashlight. He hung up. I stood outside the doorway and just reached in and hooked up the equipment. My dad comes downstairs with the flashlight, and as he steps through the door to see if I got it in the dark. That same demonic growl comes from the crawl space. He about knocked me over trying to get me back. He hands me the flashlight and goes back outside. I just stood there pointing the flashlight into the crawl space, with a feeling that something was watching me. He calls and says he's done. I grab the equipment as quickly as possible and got the hell out of there. I don't know what it was. But I've never heard a growl like that before or since. Hey guys, it's Mort here, and thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed tonight's basement stories. I've never had a basement, but I've always thought that they'd be creepy even if I did have one, unless I made it like a massive cinema screen. But that is very unlikely. It would be amazing though. I mean, we've. Just got a house, so it doesn't have a basement, so we're not going to get one. <laughs> not going to start digging tunnels. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Oh, something else that's pretty cool is that my brother launched a new video. It's pretty, pretty good. I'd recommend it. I'm going to leave the link in the description at the end.、Um, I really like his channel, and I hope you guys do too. And it would mean a lot if you give me a chance. So be sure to check it out if you need something else to watch after this video. It's pretty good, but with that being said, I'm going to leave you there. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.